Welcome to another episode of Sunday Motivations with Kevin and Friends. This show is created from my original 300 quotes, but it, it has expanded and grown to my, my friends. So each week we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Each week, one of our, our friends brings a quote. And today's quote is brought to you by Mr. Colin White. The quote of the day, it's your attitude, not your aptitude that will determine, determine your altitude. Today's episode is brought to you by RMK Productions and 10 United. So, Mr. Colin, all right, the show is yours, the flow is yours. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, and Bruce, you could back me up on this, last week when he put me on the spot for a quote, I think the quote was your attitude determines your altitude or something like that. Then we did a little uh, more research on it and realized it was a, uh, was it a Zig Ziglar yep. uh, quote, Bruce? Yep. 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 So, which, which makes perfect sense. But uh, to me, it just, it, it, it kind of is what it sounds like, you know, like everybody can put in hard work, but if you're a hard worker and you're doing everything you need to do and you're not a, a good person or a nice person, um you might fall flat you might you get you get a lot further what they say you get more bees with honey um and it, it, it costs nothing to be a good person to be a nice person to be a giving person because in order to receive you have to give so um yeah you'll you'll go far now i'm not saying it's one or the other it, it should be both but um but don't forget don't forget that attitude because a lot of people walk around here with funky attitudes wondering why things aren't going their way. And, and that's why. All right. All right, Bruce. I like um, Zig Ziglar's got quotes for, for decades, almost quite literally. One of my favorite stories, that, and there's several iterations of it, but uh, it was a sales professional was going around door to door and um, he was selling, he was selling that their product and service. And he was very, very, very relentless. Not to the point where he ignored people, but he would never end his day unless he hit his quota. And so uh, they asked him how he did it. You know, years later, they're like, man, you had all these years of consistent success. How did you do it? And come to find out, he didn't know what the word solicitation meant. So whenever he went into neighborhoods and said no solicitation, he didn't realize they were talking to him. And um, so, so since no one else was going in those neighborhoods, he was the only one. And that was how he became successful. It's almost because he, he didn't know that he couldn't do that. He didn't know that he was supposed to fail. And so I like having this attitude where the only outcome is success, where the only possible result is I win. And I think that is almost a cliche, but if you have this, this concept that success is inevitable, you're gonna behave that way. You're gonna think that way. You're going to figure it out. And even when setbacks happen, when obstacles pop up, when roadblocks present themselves, your attitude is, well, this must be part of the process. This is part of the journey. This is a step, not a stop. And as you continue to strive to adapt, to persist, like you learn, like your aptitude increases. That's practice, right? Those repetitions are practice. And you'll look back and realize, man, I've come a long way. Your altitude has increased. So having that winning attitude increases your aptitude and subsequently, your altitude. I love it. I live by this one. I live by this one. All right. All right. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Brother Bruce. Um, Miss Samantha Foster. Chris, I absolutely loved that. Um, one of the things I, I really want to uh, bring away from what you just said was uh, the no solicitation signs. And that because he didn't know the word solicitation, right, he went ahead and he was able to really um, reap the crop, the fruit um, from those um, neighborhoods. Um, but it's not letting others set our boundaries for us, right? 
Um, so, so much of the time we let society tell us no, no solicit solicitation. So, so many people didn't go into those neighborhoods and really lost out because we're letting society set our limits for us. So we got to push back. We got to say no to them and understand that we set our own limits. So yes, our attitude has everything to do with it, right? If you have a winning attitude, you're going to come in it with a more creative genius mind, if you will. Um, your that creative spark will hit, and you'll be um, you'll get these new ideas um, to really pivot you to that goal and and to be flexible. So it's coming in it with I am going to do it attitude, not I can, I will do it. It's a definite attitude, right? So I, I love this quote. And also, you know, our own self-awareness is what really um, sets our limitations also. The more that we are self-aware, the more limitless we are. So it's becoming it's that, that epiphany of, you know what? I can do whatever I want. I You really can. You look at the resources that you have around you and, and get busy and do it. Become your own creative genius, right? And you'll go as far as you want or as little as you want. It really is up to you. So thank you. I'm done speaking. That That's amazing. And that's amazing. And that gives you everyone something to think about. Um, as this... Um, yeah, I had to write that down. <laughs> you see me look over here. All right. Well, I spoke to Sam this morning, and we were talking. I had to write something down that I, I said, and um, I wrote that down. But, you know, um, when we get a quote, and this is the reason why we started this, the interpretation and perception of every quote de depends on how it lands on you based on the experience that you're sharing right now at this moment. I know when the quote hit me, I was still kind of, ingesting the conversation I had after um, visiting the John Brown Memorial. I don't know if anyone remembers that and um, they have a memorial in Lake Placid, New York. Not only do they have the memorial up there, they have um, what looks like tombstones of every single registered murder of a person of color and their story surrounded on those grounds. And me being the curious person that I am. So when, when you look at your attitude, okay, your attitude is based on present experience or past experience or emotional experiences that you have adopted and you're living with and trying to convince yourself to believe. L reading the history of John Brown, and I said I, I'm going to be ignorant, and I could have been because of the uh, injury to my head or whatever, I had forgotten that John Brown was not a person of color. And I had forgotten that John Brown had been the person that was trying to um, free people of color from slavery by attacking Harper's Ferry. And when you talk about the attitude and asking people what their perceptions or interpretation of what they were witnessing as far as history, when you read the fact that he was hung by his own people as a traitor, and you look back at what happened at the attempt, the resurrection of um, January 6th, the attack on um, our U.S. government. You know, we hung one man as a, a traitor and another man's interpretation or attitude based on his aptitude. It says that they are patriots. So we all have to remember listening to this conversation on different levels. And we could have a room full of people and put this quote out there to every single person and get a different take on this quote created by Zig Ziglar. But the key thing is that we take when we take away from what we learn or what we think we have learned is that how it affects the people that are in our inner circles. Okay, our lives and our experience only goes as far as the line we're willing to follow or the lines we're willing to cross. So this is one of those things that uh, I will say, looking at any quote, education, again, is not designed to make you comfortable. Is it designed to make you think? So 
leaving you guys with this and i want to thank everyone for coming in and i miss the fact that we did go ahead i want to say M manny yeah Ma manny i forgot and this is my grandson um God. Leave yeah i can't leave you out manny do do you need me to um requote the quote and, and get let's give your thoughts from a 22 year old young man man sitting in a room and sitting at the uh, adults table what do you think about that man uh can you recall the quote again for me go ahead mr collins wait a minute you unmute yourself i'm on mute there you go sorry about that so the quote is from zig ziglar and it is it's your attitude not your aptitude that will determine your altitude okay uh that is a good one um <laughs> i feel like uh yeah because uh i don't really know at this moment honestly that's, that's a good one. You caught me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I did catch you, catch you on the spot. And one of the things is inviting young people to the to sit the big. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let All right, sit. go ahead, Bruce. Let's 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 get some mental exercise in there. If I okay. say attitude, what comes to your mind? Just like uh, just how you come off in a room. Just how how a person come off, how they talk. Okay, okay, I like it. So aptitude is is your skill level or your ability. So if I say aptitude, what comes to mind? Uh, like the highest point. Okay. Okay. How do you get to a higher point? Uh, by you could be different ways. You could be in a room with people. You can okay just keep uh keep on uh practicing every single day. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, things like that. So who you surround yourself with? What rooms you're in? And then practice it every day. All right. So here's here's the question. Think about where you are now. Think about where you want to go. All right. Move it quickly, but but you got this. Think about where you are, where you want to go. What are you gonna do to get there? How are you gonna increase your altitude? At this moment in my life, I feel like uh I know people say money ain't everything, but I feel like my family needs money. So I feel like I'd be trying to look for the ways to make the most money. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In a good way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like, going I like money. Man. Money touches almost every aspect of my life, if not the most important thing in my life. It influences right. all my life. So what's one way, legal way, of course, that you want to get some more money? Uh, just by buying stuff, retail and selling it with a little bit more tax on there. Retail arbitrage. I like it. Yeah. I like it. That's specific. All right. Get it done. Work on it every day. Surround yourself. Um, What's my guy's name? It's Bam, B-A-M Concepts on Instagram. Yeah, Bam Concepts. Concepts on Instagram. That's all he does every day. Every day he's got some flipping pallets, just like you said, so you can probably learn a lot from him. And Kevin, thank you for allowing me to interrupt you. We don't let people off because of how old they are. All right, that that's fine. Matter, matter of fact, you know, I I was taking grandpa role, and no, that's why I had to interrupt you so, respectfully. I I, I, I want to tell you I appreciate that, um, because um, you know I I know he he's a baller, and we had a, a half hour conversation long before he came in, and purpose for me bringing him in is because you know I got a grandson that in high school was being taunted to to go to the NFL. And he's 22 years years of old, of age, and he's still not playing at the next level. And I extended an offer to him to come and stay with Grandpa, to find himself an institution where he can showcase his skills. So when you talk about attitude, mm -hmm. aptitude, all right, those things of, of saying what you desire the most, you know, God has already given you a talent. And everyone knows if you don't exercise that talent in time, God will take that talent away. So sitting in a room when you talk about aptitude of people that have hired learning, that have been where you are, and two of the people that are in this room is right in Dayton, Ohio with you. So, you know, my brothers, my fraternity brothers, 
you know, you now have access to resources, which he's already given you a resource. I don't mean to become didactic, but, you know, grandpa always preaches to you. So, you know, when you talk about aptitude, surround yourself about with people that are either going where you want to go or that have been where you want to go. And then you draw your own line in the sand. You can either stay in the lane that you're in and continue to kind of drift through life or you can put your foot on the gas pedal drift through the curves and crash into your dreams you're you're in control of your your, your own destiny your aptitude you know look up there and see where god has placed the stars the moon and all the other planets put your hand straight up in the air and see what you can pull into your life. All right. Anyone else want to add anything to this young brother's life? Well, good, man. What you said is good. Just go live it. That's it for me. Yeah. I like what um, Samantha said. She said, I, I, I will. I like that. I do. Yeah, I do. So, I mean, it's nice to meet you. So, I, I do. I have a very specific question for you, actually. Um, so you obviously know kind of what direction you want to head in. Are you looking at being an entrepreneur or um, being in the corporate world in the retail? Uh, if I can build a team, then hopefully, yeah, I would uh, go the entrepreneur route. But I just need a, a trustworthy team. So how about it, um, you contact me um, either today or later this week at your um, when you are available, and uh, let's see if we can get that honed in for you. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, that's the perfect way to end. And I am going to thank everyone for allowing me the opportunity to be in this space with so many like-minded uh, people. You know, not only do I um, learn you know, my life experiences come from a place of, of people that were a lot wiser than me. As my good friend Les Brown would always say, if you're surrounded by people, you're the smartest person in the room, then you need to get yourself new friends. And I'm lucky enough to have friends that are uh, smarter than me that I, I've learned to become a professional listener. So we meet here every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is an RMK production. Anyone wants to follow us, Go to our YouTube page, RMK Production and Network. Follow us and subscribe. And I'll say this again, education is not designed to make you comfortable. It's designed to make you think. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of Motivational Sundays with Kevin and Friends. Adapt the hashtag, find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. And as my grandfather and Manny's great grandfather used to say, when you get to a point in life, that you can help someone else. And I'm going to, this is going to tie in with what Samantha said. It is your duty to help someone. Reach one, teach one. This is Kevin McLemore, and thank you. We fade the black. <laughs>